In this video, I will show you how to sketch a possible graph of f prime, given the graph of the original function f of x. Here's a chart showing the graphical relationship between f, f prime, and f double prime. This is something that I want you to memorize because you will need this information throughout AP Calculus. Pause the screen right now and memorize the chart. Make sure that you can recreate this chart on a piece of scratch paper without looking. In fact, on your next test, that's exactly what I want you to do. Write this chart in the margin or on a piece of scratch paper. This chart tells us that wherever f is concave up, f prime will be increasing and f double prime will be positive. If f is concave down, f prime is decreasing and f double prime is negative. HTL stands for horizontal tangent line. For example, if f prime is zero, then the original function f has a horizontal tangent line. By the way, HTL is not an accepted abbreviation for the college board. So if you need to mention horizontal tangent line for a justification or something, you're going to have to write it out the long way. So here's problem number one. We are given the graph of the original function f, and we need to sketch a possible graph of f prime. Since we are given the graph of f, I'm going to start with this column of our chart. Let's divide f up into intervals based on whether f is concave up, concave down, increasing, or decreasing. Let's start with intervals of increasing versus decreasing. Put in some vertical lines to show where f changes direction. For example, f starts off increasing, and then it's decreasing, and then it's increasing again. Next, we need to identify the intervals where f is concave up or concave down. So let's put in vertical lines wherever f changes concavity. I'm noticing that f is concave down at first, and then after a while it switches and becomes concave up. I'm going to estimate that the point of inflection is here at x equals 1. That seems to be about where f changes from concave down to concave up. So our goal is to sketch a possible graph of f prime. As I analyze each of these intervals, I'm going to be labeling them according to what f prime is doing. So let's start by looking at the intervals where f is increasing or decreasing. Wherever f is increasing, f prime will be positive. Wherever f is decreasing, f prime will be negative. So in the first interval, I see that f is increasing, so f prime will be positive here. In the next interval, f is decreasing, so f prime will be negative. Next interval, f is still decreasing, so f prime will still be negative. In the last interval, f is increasing, so f prime will be positive. Now let's go back and analyze the intervals based on whether f is concave up or concave down. Remember, if f is concave up, then f prime will be increasing. If f is concave down, f prime will be decreasing. In the first two intervals, we see that f is concave down. So f prime will be decreasing. So let's label the first two intervals as decreasing. In the second two intervals, f is concave up. Therefore, f prime should be increasing in these intervals. So increasing and increasing. We can get one more important piece of information from right here on the chart. Wherever f has a horizontal tangent line, f prime will be zero. So I see that f has a horizontal tangent line right here. So I know that my graph of f prime should be zero here. There's another horizontal tangent line right here on the original f, so f prime should be zero here as well. Now it's time to start sketching our graph of f prime. In the first interval, f prime should be positive and decreasing. So I'm going to stay above the x-axis as I'm going sort of downhill. The next interval, f prime needs to be negative and still decreasing. So it's going to continue going down while being below the x-axis. Next interval, it needs to stay negative, but it will begin increasing. And I know I have to hit this point, so I'm going to start going back up to that point. In the last interval, f prime should be positive 
and increasing. So I'm going to go above the x-axis as I continue to go uphill. So that's it. What we have here in red is a possible sketch of f prime. I'm saying possible sketch because, for example, we don't know that f prime goes exactly this low. It might have gone much lower than that. So your graph of f prime could be slightly different than mine and still be correct. Just make sure that your f prime is zero whenever f has a horizontal tangent line and make sure that your f prime is positive and negative in all the right intervals and decreasing and increasing in all the right intervals. Problem number two, here is our graph of the original function f and we need to sketch a possible graph of f prime. Let's start by dividing this graph into intervals of increasing and decreasing. We notice that f is decreasing in this first interval, increasing in the middle interval, and then f is neither increasing nor decreasing in the third interval. Hmm. Normally right now we would put in additional vertical lines to show where f changes concavity. However, we notice that in every interval f is linear. Now remember that f prime represents the slope of f. So since f is linear in every interval, that means f has a constant slope in each of these intervals. So f prime will be a constant in every interval. So eventually when we draw our sketch of f prime, we will be drawing horizontal segments in each interval. Since f is decreasing in the first interval, f prime will be negative. Since f is increasing in the middle interval, then f prime will be positive. And since f is horizontal in the final interval, f prime will be zero. Since f is linear in each of the first two intervals, we can be more specific than just saying that f prime will be negative and positive. F prime will be the slope of F, the rise over the run. And in this first interval, the rise is negative three and the run is six. So the slope, F prime, will be negative one half in this interval. In the middle interval, F has a rise of five and a run of 10. So the slope, which will be F prime, is positive one half. Of course, in the last interval, the slope is simply zero. Now it's time to sketch our graph of f prime. Since f prime equals negative one half throughout the first interval, we will sketch it as a horizontal segment at negative one half. However, we need to be careful of one thing. Notice that f has a corner right here at the line. And wherever f has a corner, f prime is actually undefined. So we need to end our segment at an open circle to show that f prime is undefined. Similarly, f prime equals one half throughout the middle interval. So we will graph f prime as a horizontal segment at one half. Since f has a corner at the beginning and the end of the interval, our segment will have an open circle at the beginning and end. f prime is zero in the last interval, so we have a horizontal segment right at zero. Open circle on the end because of the corner. Number three, let's start by splitting it up into intervals of increasing and decreasing. It's looking about like this, increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. Now let's put in some additional vertical lines wherever F changes concavity. I'm estimating the points of inflection to be right about where these purple dots are. So concave down, concave up, concave down, concave up, and concave down. So there are some additional vertical lines for you. Since our goal is to sketch a graph of f prime, we need to label each interval as positive or negative, depending on whether the original graph f is increasing or decreasing. For example, f is increasing in the first interval, so f prime will be positive. f is decreasing, f prime negative. Still decreasing, negative. Increasing, increasing, that's positive, positive. Decreasing, decreasing, f prime is negative, negative. Increasing, increasing, positive, positive. And finally, decreasing, therefore f prime is negative. 
Now let's label f prime as increasing or decreasing in each interval, depending on whether f is concave up or concave down. For example, in the first two intervals, f is concave down, so f prime will be decreasing in both of these intervals. In the next two intervals, f is concave up, therefore f prime will be increasing. Next two intervals, f is concave down, so we're back to decreasing for f prime. Then concave up gives us increasing, increasing, and concave down gives us decreasing and decreasing for f prime. One more crucial piece of information comes from this part of the chart right here. Wherever f has a horizontal tangent line, f prime will be exactly zero. So I see we have a horizontal tangent line here, so f prime will be zero. Horizontal tangent line here, f prime is zero. Another horizontal tangent line here, f prime is zero, here and here as well. In the first interval, we know that f prime is positive and decreasing, and it has to hit this point. So it might look something like this. In the next interval, f prime is negative and decreasing. So I've drawn it below the x-axis and downhill. In the next interval, f prime is negative and increasing. So it's below the x-axis and uphill, and we know it has to hit this point. In the next interval, f prime is positive and increasing, so above the x-axis and uphill. In the next interval, f prime is positive and decreasing, above the x-axis, downhill, and it has to hit this point. In the next interval, f prime is negative and decreasing, so below the x-axis and downhill. In the next interval, f prime is negative and increasing, so below the x-axis and uphill, and it had to hit this point. In the next interval, f prime is positive and increasing, above the x-axis and uphill. In the next interval, f prime is positive and decreasing, above the x-axis and downhill, and it had to hit this point. In the last interval, f prime is negative and decreasing, so below the x-axis and downhill. And that's it. We have a possible sketch of f prime. Number four, here's f. Let's split it up into intervals of increasing and decreasing. So far we have this, increasing, decreasing, and then increasing again. Normally, right now, we would add in additional vertical lines wherever f changes concavity. However, f changes from concave down to linear right here where we already have a vertical line. So we're already done with that. Now let's label f prime as positive or negative, depending on whether f is increasing or decreasing. So in the first interval, f is increasing, therefore f prime will be positive. f is decreasing in the next interval, so f prime will be negative, and f is increasing in the last interval, so f prime will be positive. Next, we will label f prime as increasing or decreasing, based on whether f is concave up or concave down, or neither. We see that f is concave down in the first two intervals. Therefore, f prime will be decreasing in both of these intervals. In the last interval, f is linear. It's neither concave up nor concave down. However, we can be more specific about f prime than just simply saying that it is positive. Since f prime is linear, that means it has a constant slope which will equal f prime. It seems that for a rise of two, f has a run of four. So for this entire interval, f prime will equal about one half. One more thing before we sketch f prime. Anywhere f has a horizontal tangent line, f prime will be exactly zero. f has a horizontal tangent line right here, so f prime will equal zero. In the first interval, f prime is positive and decreasing. So I've drawn it above the x-axis and downhill, and we knew it had to hit this point. In the middle interval, f prime is negative and decreasing. So I've drawn f prime below the x-axis and downhill. But watch out for this extra detail. We notice that f has a cusp at the end of this interval. So I've drawn an open circle to show that f prime is undefined here. Throughout the last interval, f prime equals one half. 
so we sketch it as a horizontal segment at one half. We need to begin the interval with an open circle to show that f prime is undefined at the cusp. And that's it. This is a possible sketch of f prime. Let's do one more. Here is the graph of f. Let's start by dividing it into intervals of increasing and decreasing. Okay, so far we have decreasing, horizontal, increasing, horizontal. Now let's put in additional vertical lines to show where f changes concavity. Well, f is linear almost everywhere, except for this one little piece right here where f is concave down. I see that it changes from linear to concave down right about here. So I am going to put in a vertical line right here. But we already have a vertical line showing where it goes from concave down to linear. Now it's time to label f prime as positive, negative, or zero in each interval, depending on whether f is increasing, decreasing, or horizontal. Since f is decreasing in the first interval, f prime will be negative. Since f is horizontal in the next interval, f prime will be zero. f is increasing in the next two intervals, so f prime will be positive in both of these. And f is again horizontal in the last interval, so f prime will be zero. Now it's time to label f prime as increasing or decreasing, depending on whether f is concave up or concave down. However, f is mostly linear. It's only in this one interval right here where f is concave down, where we can say that f prime is decreasing. So let's go ahead and put decreasing right here. In all of the other intervals where f is linear, we can be really specific about what f prime is doing. It'll simply be the slope in each interval. Analyzing the rise over run for the first interval, we see that f prime will equal negative two. In the next interval and in the last interval, f is horizontal, so the slope, which is f prime, will equal zero. In the remaining interval, f goes up four over four, so f prime equals one. Throughout the first interval, f prime equals negative two, so we draw a horizontal segment at negative two. We need to end with an open circle to show that f prime is undefined at this corner. In the next interval, f prime is zero, so horizontal segment at zero, undefined on both ends, open circles. In the next interval, f prime equals one, so we have a horizontal segment at one. Notice we have an open circle on the left because f has a corner on the left, but I did not put an open circle on the right because there's no corner here. Next, I'm going to jump to the last interval where we know that f prime is zero, so we have a horizontal segment at zero. No open circle because there's no corner here. Now all we have to do is connect up these two pieces. Notice that by connecting these two horizontal pieces of f prime, we have drawn an interval where f prime is positive and decreasing. It's above the x-axis and downhill. And that's it. We have a possible sketch of f prime.